he's my my tower of strength, I should say. I've had many illnesses lately since I retired, and he's been there 100% for me in everything. Yeah, that's the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. For every person like Helen, who's lucky enough to use bingo to complement a relationship with their husband, there are people like Esther Brand. Esther's husband died two years after they retired to Florida. She's been alone ever since. And she's got more reason than anyone I know to be down on life. But she's there at bingo every day, making the effort to get out, to meet new people, and more often than not, bring me bagels and locks. My name is Esther Brent. Okay, I was born in Poland. And I had, uh, we were six children. And uh, the, I was 12 and a half years old when they took me to concentration camps. And I was four and a half years in, in a concentration camp. I was in Bergen-Belsen. Then uh, we went to Dachau. I lost the whole family, only one sister. It's not until you get older that you begin to think about some of the more long-term issues. What you need to do to be happy. What you need to do to be healthy. What you need to do to steer your life in a certain direction while you still have the chance. My name is Sean Shoemaker. I come in hungover about five or six days a week. <laughs> well, there was three cakes at the one party we went to. And Sean, what's up, dude? <laughs> the server guy. Sean's the kind of guy that you come in and you can also have fun with. He's uh, crazy, he tells your story. I went out, I, you know, I met these girls and this and that. And I don't know, I've, I've had a variety of girls, all uh, different kinds. Surfer girls, uh, preppy girls, ditzy girls. <laughs> Do you get that free t-shirt? Yes. 120, 40, 60, 80, 90, 200. Not that much difference between Surfer Girl and the Ditsy Girl. They're all pretty much the same to me. <laughs> They're all a bunch of game players until you find the right one. <laughs> Maybe because of his age, Sean, I think, sees bingo differently than I do. For him, it's sheer practicality. The food here is wonderful. If it wasn't for bingo food, I probably wouldn't eat that much because I don't have my mom living at my house cooking me dinner every day. It's like take out, take out, dollar bingo. <laughs> Even though our priorities are different, seeing him deal with his day-to-day -day problems reminds me of what it's like to be young. And that's something that's sometimes all too easy to forget. Oh yeah, Brian uh, helping me out with a car, put up a sign, Sean needs wheels. Uh, as soon as that sign was up there, I had like 15 old people. Oh, I know somebody with a car, you want a Cadillac? Oh, man, I'll be riding the U.S. Enterprise. I don't know. <laughs> I'm looking forward to keep working here and try to put myself through school by working here. Pay for my school, pay for my phone, pay for all my bills. You know, without, without good finance, you ain't good nowhere unless you're, unless you're jingling, baby. <laughs> Hopefully, I won't have to get another job. <laughs> I don't want to work twice as much. I already work enough. <laughs> to people my age, bingo seems like it's been around forever. But it hasn't, or at least it hasn't been in its current form. It actually came about around the time most of the patrons at Delray Bingo were born. And as they've grown, so has the game. What was once exclusively a game designed to take advantage of the small time gambler and all of us has now evolved into a game with much higher stakes. Hi, my name is Jeff Lewis. I'm the owner and president of uh, Bingo Video Entertainment. Um, my company does business under the name Bingo King in Southeast Florida. I am responsible for the Southeast Florida market, the Caribbean, Central and South America uh, in terms of bingo and, and, get, and some other gaming related products. Basically bingo as we know it was developed um, in Italy in the 1700s in, and four different forms of bingo have been played all over the world. Um, bingo as we know it in the United States really developed sometime in the 30s um, with a gentleman by the name of Edwin Lowe who um, was a toy manufacturer and carnival person and uh, he developed a game called Beano and uh, sometime along the way playing the game of Beano a person got excited and, and, and uh, was on for a number and, and accidentally yelled bingo when she won. A lot of these people are spending a lot of money on bingo but when you think about the role it plays in their lives it's probably a lot less money than they'd spend on a therapist. Because that's what it is to a lot of these people, therapy. Of course, not everyone sees it like that. 
Nationwide, the revenue from bingo runs into the billions, mostly non-taxable. It actually outdraws professional football, basketball, and baseball combined. In my opinion, the worst thing that can happen in the business, of course, the state would shut us down, but uh, bingo's existed in Florida for an awfully long time. I don't, that would be very tough for the state to come in and enforce uh, that issue. Close Delray Bingo? Yeah. Oh, I thought I'd be out of this world. I mean, I don't know where I'd be. <laughs> Are you kidding? I'd be up uh, some creek without a paddle. We do put back a lot into the community, and we work our asses off. We spend, uh, I spend 16 hours a day here, five days a week, minimum. And we put in a lot of time and a lot of effort to make sure that these wonderful people that play bingo have a social hall to play in. And at the same time, our charities make a ton of money. So bingo is my only deal. And it's my, it's my, um, how would I say, my therapy. Every year, bingo halls have to fight to stay open. As every year, the state legislature threatens to regulate it or shut it down. Needless to say, a lot of people aren't happy about that. Florida right now is going through a very conservative uh, political environment, and the people that are in leadership positions, by and large, are very conservative. So this would be the type of environment, I would think, that would be more interested in shutting down gambling types of operations. But again, I think that the senior citizens in Florida, who seem to be the people to play it the most, do have a loud voice, have a loud collective voice, and they do vote. Well, I've been in the legislature uh, five years, and I would say uh, it always comes up. Uh, it has come up every year in, in terms of a proposal. Typically, the proposals are to limit it, uh, to restrict it, limit the numbers of days a week that a bingo operator can operate, uh, try to eliminate it altogether. I would say about every two years, it, there's a serious effort uh, against bingo, but it hasn't passed uh, in the last number of years. And again, when it, when it does come up in the legislature, Many people come out of the woodwork. You really do get a lot of people that uh, participate in the debate that I don't normally hear from uh, when bingo is challenged. Senior citizens vote, senior citizens register, senior citizens call my office, write letters, and when they want to engage on an issue, they let us know. And, uh, and again, again, we pay attention to all voters when they contact us, but the reality is uh, we'll hear from a lot more seniors many times than on other uh, issues. Um, I think it's uh, relatively harmless, it's a, it's a life form of entertainment, um, it gets them out of their home. So again, from my perspective, I don't see bingo as being uh, anything that's terrible and, and I've continued to uh, support uh, the idea of uh, bingo being played. Again, as long as I see it's, it's for charitable purposes, I think it, it presents a uh, positive thing for this area. Like most people in the outside world, I didn't know much about bingo before. That's because it's something that takes place behind closed doors. Just about every city or town has a bingo hall, but if you don't hang out with the senior citizens or go to church, it's a pretty well-kept secret.